on the first rudiments of the physical body. In aphorism 5, I mentioned that moon and sun existences preceded our present earth existence. Only with regard to the moon existence, however, does clairvoyant consciousness receive impressions reminiscent of earth existence. Such impressions cannot be gained when clairvoyant vision turns its gaze backward to the primal distances of the earth's sun existence. For that sun existence reveals itself as a world consisting entirely of beings and their deeds. To receive an impression of sun existence, one must maintain a distance from ideas that can be gained in the earthly realm of mineral and plant life. Such concepts are useful only for understanding the earlier states of the earth itself, or in the case of concepts gained from the plant kingdom for ancient moon existence. Only concepts stimulated by the animal and human realms can lead to the earth's primordial sun existence. Such concepts, however, must do more than merely picture what the senses perceive as the nature of those realms. Suprasensory consciousness finds within the human etheric body powerful forces that form themselves into images expressing the etheric body's cosmic origins in the deeds of spiritual beings during the old sun period. We can then follow the development from those beginnings through the moon and earth periods. There we find them transformed, and through that transformation they became what we now see as the activity of the human etheric body. Understanding the human physical body demands a different activity of human consciousness. At first the physical body appears to be simply an outer stamp or impression of the etheric body, but more precise observation reveals that if the physical body were only a sensory physical manifestation of the etheric body, human beings could never have developed their being fully in the sensory world. Had that been the case, a kind of willing feeling and thinking would certainly have arisen, but not of a kind that could be integrated in such a way that a conscious I experience could then arise in the human soul. <clears throat> this becomes especially clear when consciousness begins to develop the characteristics of spiritual seeing. As human beings we initially develop the I experience only in the sensory world, where we are clothed in physical bodies. Thus sheathed, we can then carry that experience into the elemental world and further into the spiritual world, thereby penetrating the etheric and astral bodies. As human beings, we have initially etheric and astral bodies in which I experience does not take shape. It is in the physical body that I experience must first occur. Indeed, when we consider the physical body from the perspective of the spiritual world, we can see that it contains something essential, whose truth is not fully revealed even in the spiritual world. When consciousness clairvoyantly enters the spiritual world, the soul becomes accustomed to the world of thought reality. There it is the I experience alone which enters that world by an appropriate strengthening of the soul that is not woven simply out of cosmic thoughts. I experience finds nothing in its surroundings akin to its own nature in the world of cosmic thought. To feel something of that sort, the soul must continue its path in the suprasensory. On its journey into the suprasensory, the soul must arrive at experiences in which thoughts abandon it, where all sensory experience and all experiences of thinking, feeling and willing lie, as it were, behind it. Only then does the soul, for the first time, feel united with an essence that forms the basis of the world and precedes all that one can observe as a sensory, etheric and astral being. Eventually, then, we shall feel ourselves to be in a still higher realm than those spiritual worlds we have come to know. We shall call this world, which only the I can experience, the supra-spiritual world. Seen from that world, 
even the realm of thought reality appears as an external world. If you follow the path of suprasensory consciousness through its various stages, suprasensory consciousness will attain an experience that we can describe approximately as follows. Once the soul feels itself within the etheric body and feels that its environment is the elemental processes and beings, then it knows it is outside the physical body. Although the physical body, when seen from without, is transformed, it remains present as a real being. Viewed by spiritual vision, it breaks into two parts. One expresses the deeds of spiritual beings who have been active since the beginning of earth existence. The other expresses what had already been present during the earth's moon existence. This is how things remain, as long as consciousness experiences itself only in the elemental world. In that world consciousness can discover how the human being as a physical being was formed during the moon state. When consciousness enters the spiritual world, yet another part of the physical body separates off. <clears throat> this is the part formed by the deeds of spiritual beings during the moon state. Another part remains behind. This is the part that was present as our physical human nature during the earth's sun state. But when we consider from the perspective of the spiritual world all that occurred during the sun period as a result of the activities of spiritual beings, we see that something of that physical nature still remains. What remains reveals itself as the deed of spiritual beings from the supra-spiritual world. We can see that it was already present at the beginning of the sun period. Therefore, to find the origins of the physical human body, we must go back to an earth state preceding the sun period. In my book, An Outline of Esoterics, excuse me, in my book title, An Outline of Esoteric Science, I tried to justify calling that condition of the earth's existence the Saturn state. In this sense, the earth was Saturn before it became sun. During that Saturn state, the first outline of the human physical body arose from general cosmic processes through the deeds of spiritual beings. During the following sun and moon periods, as well as during our present earth period, these rudiments were transformed through the activities of other spiritual beings to become the present human physical body.